Welcome to the 2020 Stone Food and Drink Festival. Yes, it's not the same that we normally have. Sorry you can't be with us and we can't be with you, but hey, that's the pandemic. So we're doing what we can to bring you the normal gastronomic delights that we have each year at the festival. And thanks to Jowls, one of our main sponsors, we're here in the new Crown Wolf pub. Not a pub as yet, but you can see what it's going to be like. Fantastic setting. They have been wonderful sponsors for us. And they, along with Lexus of Stoke, are helping us put on these productions to show you the chefs that you would have seen if you'd have been in Westbridge Park. As ever, we've got a lot of local talent. We've got some excellent chefs, some old favourites returning, some new faces coming in. And we're starting today with Jake Lowndes. If you've been to Little Seeds at Bradford Street in Stone, then you'll know what Jake's cooking is like. If you haven't been, ring up and book because it is excellent. Things haven't been easy for a lot of businesses during the, co uh, the COVID crisis. And I know that hasn't been, interesting, uh, been that great for you, Jake, but how have things been now and how are you getting back to your feet? Yeah, we're, get, we're getting there now, Colin. Yeah, we're getting back to uh, um, some kind of new normal, if, you, if that's how you say A new normal, yeah. yes. Um, yeah, the Eat Out to Help Out scheme helped us a lot and uh, yeah, and we've had investment in the, in the restaurant. Yes, now well, we've investment in, includes building a new garden. Yeah, so we've hev heavily invested in, in that and we've got exciting things coming next year to do with that. Really exciting things, so we'll have to wait and see. Good, and also I understand that for the first time you're going to try opening Christmas Day. Uh, absolutely, yeah. We, we want to um, give everyone the Little Seeds experience on Christmas Day because we've had a lot of demand for it. So The Little Seeds experience, if you haven't been to Little Seeds, I can assure you it is an experience to go there. It's absolutely fantastic. Uh, right, what are you cooking for us today then, Jake? So today, Colin, we've got two dishes. We've got... Um, a tomato burrata um, starter dish. So a tomato burrata. So we've got uh, um, we've got burrata cheese. Ah, uh, right. Isle of white tomatoes and basil. So really simple, um, based on a classic like Italian panzanella uh, little salad. Um, and then for main course we've got uh, a lamb romp um, with Provencal style um, garnish. So we've got courgettes, uh, olive and um, tomato and anchovy, so. So you're doing lamb, my favorite. I have to say, ladies and gentlemen, that my wife and I were in Jake's restaurant only a couple of weeks ago, and this isn't a plug, and it was easily the best lamb dish I've ever had. And only last week I was eating lamb cooked by a Michelin star chef, and it wasn't as good as that. It was excellent, Jake. I'll right, pay, so, pay you later. <laughs> over to you, young man. So we'll start with, um, yeah, we start with the beautiful um, Isle of White tomatoes we've got here. Uh, so the heritage variety, so you get all different shapes, sizes and colours. Uh, yeah, so they're really beautiful tomatoes. You've got, you got small ones, big ones. Some as big as your head. Exactly, You yeah. wouldn't know that song. So we, we start with a, a bigger one. Now where do you get your tomatoes from or do you grow any of yourself in your garden? Yeah, I, I, I do grow a few. I've, I've grown these ones here, um, but obviously the demand and size, we can't. Oh, no, I we can't grow, grow them all. Uh, no, so. But um, there's nothing like ha having something fresh straight out of the garden. Yeah, exactly. Even if it's only a few herbs, yeah. And it teaches you about how, how things are, the life cycle of stuff and when the best to eat and, and um, all that kind it of stuff. It teaches you gardening, in other words, yes. And I find it quite relaxing as well, so I, I, yes. I enjoy doing yes. it. So, got the tomatoes. You just chop up some of those. Now I see what you mean about the different sizes, because that's almost square, that one. Yeah, you want to get a good variety of uh, sizes and colours. And the difference in colour is important because you eat with your eyes as much as you do with your, yeah, and the, with your taste. Yeah. And they're all different varieties and all different flavours, like I say, from the, the grown in the, the Isle of Wight, which has got a specific um, um, climate and temperature. They're grown, they grow so well there, and the, the taste is just, like, amazing. Other so, islands are available, but the Isle of Wight is particularly lovely, yes? Yeah. Although I haven't been for a few years. For tomatoes, is 
it's something special. So. So do you get these directly from the supplier or through a wholesaler? Yeah, d well, uh, yeah, we get them through um, a wholesaler, Wallex, who we use a really good supplier of fruit and veg. Um, so yeah, we get them through them. So there you have, what, would five, six different varieties, and yes, is it is a bit of a smorgasbord of uh, tomatoes, isn't it? They're all different. Yeah, that's it. Let's do one more of those. And then it's really important that we uh, season them before we put them on the plate. So e each individual tomato, season with good Malden sea salt. All the way from Essex. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And then we can just start plating this up. Really, really simple. There's no, there's no rules to this. Just, just make it look nice. Um, now this is the sort of dish that you would have uh, on the menu at Little Seeds. This, yeah, this is on at the moment, yeah. This is on. So when you say there's no rules to plating up, every time this dish goes out to a customer waiting in the restaurant, it could, be slight, could look slightly different, depending this, on which tomatoes you use, how you cut them, and how you arrange them. Yeah, this is it. It could be slightly different yeah because i mean i mean the tomatoes we get in different colors each yeah, week and yeah. different i know consistency important consistency is very important in the restaurant but it's like that, that again already that looks fantastic and then we put on the burrata cheese here now what is burrata cheese i've never heard of it so this is like the next level up from your yeah, mozzarella cheese right so it's it's mozzarella bound in um casing with cream in it as well so you you, you crack it open and it oozes out and it's like mozzarella times 10 on creaminess. <laughs> so it's a... Uh, you sound very enthusiastic about that, Jake, yeah. You need to, you need to try this in a minute, it's amazing. So that goes on the top like that. Um, and then we've got some capers here, Lily put capers, um, lovely little capers. So we put these on for a bit of acidity. You just sprinkle them around. So you're looking for the balance of acidity in the tomato and the capers and the creaminess of the Yeah, cheese. exactly. So that's really creamy. The tomatoes are just beautiful flavour on there. And then we've got a little um, crouton here. So like I say, it's based on the panzanella. So this is a little, um, the bread element, um, little croutons. Now who supplies your bread? Where do you get your bread from? Uh, we, b we bake all the bread. So, so bread is baked excellent. Um, we, we bake Who's the baker? It. You? Uh, the, the, uh, Reese bakes the bread a lot oh, of the right, time, so or yeah. Josh, um, yeah. we've got another Cheney chef, Josh, um, he's been baking the bread, um, so yeah. And then we've got some, um, a mixture of toasted seeds here for a bit more texture, so we just put that on the top. We say toasted seeds, what are these, sunflower and...? Yeah, a real good mixture. There's. Um, Black sesame, sunflower, uh, pumpkin, uh, chai seed. A real good mixture of seeds in there. Uh, and then we dress it with some really good quality extra virgin olive oil. So that goes on top. And then some basil. This is from the garden as well, this basil. Fresh basil. Fresh basil, you really need for this. Yes, my wife and I always got a couple of basil plants going because you need to cook, eat it very fresh. Obviously, tomato and basil, classic combination. So you just pick some, some of the smaller leaves. So e each bite you get some lovely tomato, creamy burrata, the basil. And then we finish, we make this uh, herb oil. So it's just out of all the soft herbs that we We've got in the garden, go and spare. So like chives, parsley, uh, tarragon, um, dill goes into this. And, and you grow all those yourselves? Yeah, we grow, we grow these ourselves and then we, but some, sometimes you get uh, excess and, and- How long does that keep for? Um, yeah, it'll keep, airtight, it'll keep for a week, pretty good. But we, we do it every, every day, every other day normally. And you just blitz that up with a bit of olive oil? Yeah, blitz it up. The, re the reason I'm asking, I don't know if, if you ever thought about this, ladies and gents, but uh, I've got, uh, we grow a lot of herbs at home, and with oregano especially this year, it's just yeah. gone wild. 
and we just can't use enough of it and we dry some but i never thought of doing that yes yeah, so you can make an oregano oil that's a good idea yes and you could you could freeze it it freezes really well oil um, to keep the color and and the, the flavor and then you can use it again Greek tips as well next year so as entertainment so yeah if you call this entertainment finish it with the herb oil like that and that's the the finished dish start now, having plated an ordinary plain white plate with really cheese tomato and bread that looks absolutely stunning and that's the art it looks good and that's where the skill comes in as well as the balance of flavors so there's our burrata yeah burrata. tomato and burrata starter oh that's it that's it i'll just cut this open so you can see what it's like inside so then it just oozes out inside and then you can almost scoop that onto your tomatoes and and uh, devour it and how how um cooking has changed over the years once upon a time a cheese and tomato starter you would why would well, i have that but the way it's done now it's absolutely fantastic that looks wonderful jake and that's on the menu at the moment yeah so that's on the menu at the moment i mean are you still in your summer menu are yeah, you? We're, yeah. St we're in the transition of week by week i mean we change the menu daily when we have to um well, well we, we want when we want to um with whatever garnishes are around and whatever's mm. in season. And um, at the moment we're in transition of going to more autumnal flavors with, yeah. well, it's, it's still supposed to be summer, but it's feeling very autumnal isn't it, at the minute, so yeah. It was very summery where I was yesterday. So we're changing, changing it up. So Okay, on. so you're going for the lamb now. Yeah, moving on to the lamb dish. So just to take you through what we've got with the lamb. Um, so we've got a lamb that's been sous vide uh, to, 57 degrees, so that's um, been now, sous vide this morning. Sous vide is in a hot water bath. Yeah, so that's at a it. very precise temperature. Yeah, so that's perfectly pink in the middle. Um, and we've got some Evesham courgette from Worcestershire here, like we just boiled up, and um, that's a garnish. We've got some salsa verde, lovely salsa verde, it works amazing with lamb. Which is. Uh, that's got uh, anchovies in it. A lot, again, a lot of soft herbs: parsley, mint, basil, um, mustard, all blitzed up. To if you want to have a taste of that. Now, is your salsa verde a classic recipe, or is this your own that you've developed over the years? No, it's a pretty classic recipe. I just put in um, a few extra things. As most chefs do, put yeah. a little twist on it. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then we've got here. We've got a. Uh, a tomato and anchovy dressing with some red pepper in, in there, and that, that cuts through the, the lamb. And then we've got a courgette and basil puree. So obviously we make the, we boil the courgette and then you're left with a, a courgette with a lot of holes in. <laughs> yes, yes. So we, out of that trim, we don't just chuck it away. We make a courgette and basil puree. So that adds to the, uh, the flavors of the dish. I come all the way and from Evesham. Love Evesham, lovely yeah. place. So. Okay, chef. We'll start off by getting the lamb um, on the go. So like I say, this has been sous vide to um, 50, 57 degrees um, with some garlic and rosemary in the bag for flavor. So that's, that's all right. It's been brined as well before that, I should say. So it's been brined for um, uh, two hours and then. So there's a couple of processes already gone ahead with that. Yeah. Where do you get your lamb from, Jay? Where do you get all your meat from? So the, we get our meat from um, the catering butcher, H&H &H Jackson, yeah. um, based in Longton. So a local butcher, uh, local lamb. Um, I believe he gets it from Shropshire, I think. It might be Wales, but it's British lamb. Um, yeah, so from local butcher. So we'll just open this up and get this in the pan. Get this in, so a hot pan, and you get that sizzling, get that going. This is where I stand back. So a really hot pan, and then we've got, um, what else have we got? We've got some rate potatoes as well um, to go with this. So we'll just slice them, slice them up. Now, I had some of those the other evening at your restaurant, and they yeah. are just a variety of potato. Yeah, so they're like, they're like a, a really waxy French-style variety of potato to go with like the, the French-style yes. garnish. Yes, so yeah, you say a, a Provencal-based dish, yeah. 
it works really well. So we just cut up a few of these. And of course, one thing that you won't get on the camera, ladies and gents, you might get the sight and the sound of the cooking, but you don't get the fantastic smell. So I'm sure one day someone will come up with an idea to transmit that. So we'll get them in a pan as well at the same time. So these have already been um, parboiled off, so these are, these just need um, sauteing in the pan, heating back through. Now where my wife cooks, and she's a cook, I'm not, she will invariably either blanch potatoes or just put them on for four or five minutes just to help soften them up because that will help, helps to, whether they're being fried or even baked, it helps in, um, they soak, they soak, they take things up easier, is that right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absorb absolutely. it, that's the word I was looking for, yeah. And in service, obviously, you want, you want, you want to just um, cook it and it goes out to the customer fresh as you can and you can't parboil customer, parboil to take no, so it order. So, so that's, that's part of the prep before you open. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But each dish is cooked as it's ordered. Yeah, that's, that, that's, that's what we do. As fresh as we can, everything. Like we bake the bread every day. We make um, our own ice creams. We make all our own stocks and sauces. So that's the, that's the philosophy that we, all seasonal menus and. And you can book online now, can't you? Yeah, you can. absolutely. Little Seeds, just Google Little Seeds Stone and you can get the, it gives you the availabilities. Yeah. You can book online. That's probably the best way to, to book and with go, us. And go, because it is fantastic. It's an experience. It's online. So now it's starting to uh, heat up in there. We had a little bit of butter. And the chef's favorite friend, a little bit of butter. <laughs> Which is about two and a half pounds. <laughs> so, yeah. so we'll baste the, baste the lamb now. So similarly to the potatoes which have been partly cooked, the sous vide, uh, the brining and the sous vide of the lamb will help cook it, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, and the, so brining, the, pan. the brining almost seasons it and adds, adds a lot of flavour. Um, and then the sous vide with the, with the aromats of the garlic and the rosemary um, adds even more flavour. And then finishing off the outside with the, with the butter just uh, gets that even more flavour on the outside. So. Baste away. And then it's really important to rest it. So we rest the lamb. More that. So you really have only finished that off, that's taken about five minutes. Yeah, absolutely. So I'll put the potatoes to one side ready, ready to plate up. And then tip the rest of that onto the lamb. And then our Evesham courgettes, we finish them off in the, the same pan as well as the lamb. So it get, takes on a bit of that, um, the lamb flavor. So you can't waste any of that courgettes. Flavor. I mean, I, I love courgettes. Tried growing them once and they took over the garden. Um, but again, courgettes will benefit from a bit of extra flavour. Just yeah. to enhance them, yeah. So they're, they're being done in the, the remainder of the juice from the lamb. Yeah, but, but we've um, also compressed them in, in some, some of the herb oil from earlier. We've compressed right. them in that okay, yeah. and some salt. So we've put them in a bag um, with the salt and the herb oil. Um, so in a this, machine. this isn't just a case of drying the, drying the slice of the courgette, drying them out with a bit of salt and put them in the pan. There's been several processes in each, in each case with everything you're cooking. Yeah, like because you say courgettes are renowned for just can be a bit watery, can be a bit flavourless. So we've tried to inject as maximum flavouring as we can from the, from the garden but with I, the herb I, oil. I like the flavour of courgettes. Mm. People say that my wife says they're tasty. I don't, that, I don't think so. Yeah. They're lovely. And especially with this, this, keeping the skin on, they've got, yes, they've yes. got really, really good flavour. So we let them um, fry off in there. You see the colouring, the colouring up really nice underneath now. So that's getting really good colour and flavour from the lamb. 
And then while that, they're doing, the, doing that, we will uh, start plating up. So we just put the potatoes in the middle as a base on the plate. And then we work around that with the Give the courgettes a little go on the other side. And plating up and presentation are as important as the cooking. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, people eat with their eyes, don't they? So everything's got to look, like you said before, consistent and um, really, uh, really appealing. Have you finished with this one, Jake? Yeah. I'll turn it off. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then, thanks, Alan. So we don't want any accidents here. We'll get the courgettes on there. And then a little bit of a courgette and basil puree. And then we go with the salsa verde. The salsa verde and we just Sweep that around the edge. Like that. And then the tomato and anchovy dressing. Oh. It's very, uh, again, the plating up is a similar, but you never get exactly the same with, this, with the swirls and the dots and, and uh, all the bits. But it always looks very dramatic. It, it, it lends act I think it lends action to the plate when yeah. you come out. When, when you see it, dressed, uh, see it uh, served up like that, it looks so it's a, it's, it's a moving picture almost exactly. on the plate. And then we'll take a lamb that's been rested and then we'll slice this, slice this up now. Like all meat, it needs to rest for a, a short while at least. Yeah, exactly. I don't know if the camera can pick that up, but that looks beautifully pink inside. Yeah. But if you like your lamb a little bit more well done, you could easily do it under this method, can you? Just leave it in for a bit longer. Yeah, that's it, that's it. So we'll, we'll pop that on the top, on the top there. Really juicy. You could eat this with a spoon, it's really just melts in your mouth. Um, and then we finish with a little bit of uh, olive powder. This is uh, just black olive, dehydrated, and then blended up. And then this just gives dehydrated it dehydrated olive. Yeah, right. It's, it keeps the flavour, but it's it's a it's a good texture, and it's the again textures. You need that variety of textures yeah, as well as colours exactly. and tastes. Yeah. So we sprinkle this on, and that's it. So we've had the tomato burrata. And something starter. I'm sorry, uh, chef. I've forgotten. And the course. and the basil starter. The basil starter with the 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 Evesham courgette, um, lamb rump, and um, tomato and anchovy. Jake, thank you very much. Jake's restaurant is uh, available. It's taking orders. You can find it. I'm just putting little seeds stone, and you'll find the website for Jake Jake and Sophie's cooking. Uh, big big thank you to the guys and the rest of the crew out here helping. Massive thanks to. Jowls for putting all this on for us at the Crown Wolf pub and a huge huge thank you to Lexus of Stoke Who again have been helping the festival for a number of years and are very keen to get involved again And we thank them very much and thank you for watching. Thank you You have just been watching Jake Lowndes of Little Seeds restaurant in Radford Street Stone a massive thank you to Jowls Brewery for allowing us to film this video in the Crown Wharf in Stone. Please note this building is still under construction and there is no public access at the moment. The current proposed opening date is late spring 2021. Stone Food and Drink Festival would also like to extend further massive thanks to Lexus Stoke for their very generous sponsorship which has enabled us to produce this video. Hopefully we shall be back next year on Westbridge Park for the 2021 Stone Food and Drink Festival. So, put the dates in your diary now. The 1st, 2nd and 3rd of October. Hopefully we'll see you then and thanks for watching.